we've got all kinds of new therapies out there. So what is the clinical rationale for combining insulin with a GLP-1 receptor antagonist, for example? I think the, the complementary mechanisms, I mean, the, the insulin is obviously mandatory at that stage of the, uh, of, of the disease, but the GLP-1 adds an extra um, therapy which is complementary in terms of enhancing insulin secretion. And for some of the GLP-1s, delaying gastric emptying has a marked effect. And, and postprandial glucose levels can come down pretty dramatically, as well as the preprandials or fasting glucose. So it's a concept of, of using the one-two punch. And generally, we tend to use it more um, after the oral agents, but that's starting to move up. I think that we're starting to see a greater move after, after um, failure of two or more oral agents. Starting a, a GLP-1 insulin combination therapy is certainly uh, either or separately or I believe together is the way to go. Most of what we said earlier about insulin was around basal insulin, okay. which addresses fasting glucose very well, but does not use the physiological uh, uh, replacement which involves prandial control, insulin secretion during a meal. So you would either have to do that, which is complex, or give something else. And you mentioned GLP-1. So this is a good combination whereby the basal insulin controls the fasting glucose. The prandial ins the, we, instead of prandial insulin, we're using GLP-1 receptor agonists, often one injection a day or once a week, that will stimulate insulin secretion at the time of a meal and suppress glucagon at that time, slow gastric emptying, control the weight gain. So lots of reasons for using these two together. And you know, the studies that have been done are remarkable in that they show that doing twice a day or once a day or once weekly, GLP-1 on top of basal insulin is as good as, in terms of A1C reduction, three times a day prandial insulin mm -hmm. with less hypoglycemia and, of course, a favorable weight outcome. And so it's, do three it's, times a day insulin anyway? It's, it's, hard. it's, it's a no-brainer. Uh, so we're all in agreement? Well, we can go home now. We'll just start everybody. Except, on GLP except, except that except. those were separate. Now we want. Now we are moving towards combining the two in one injection, and that's really the key. And except that GLP-1 receptor agonists are costly. In GLP-1 receptor agonists, they have an issue of GI adverse events. For the most part, they have 25 or 30 percent the nausea in around 8% of vomiting that eventually subsides over time. But many people in the real world stop the medication. Okay, now and I heard they, a little gasp over Yeah, there. yeah, because the, the, it's not 20 to 25%. In some cases, it's, it's 9 or 10%. No. And I, I, yes, and I think that that's what the data shows. No. Nope. And I think that, um, <laughs> and, I, and I think that it's important to point out that up to 25% of people on metformin have side effects and stop taking it. So you, yes, you have an agent that is highly effective. Yes, there's a percentage of patients, number one, that won't, won't respond, that may have side effects. Um, the, the medications are highly effective. If you look at persistence, it depends upon what you look at. If you compare to oral meds, yeah, it's not gonna be as persistent as you get oh, with oral meds. But the point meds. I'm trying to say is, for the most part, in the cumulative incidence of nausea is around 25 to 30 percent. Some people may not have it, but the cumulative incidence is 25 to 35 percent, and the vomiting is 8 to 10 percent. In an individual in the real world, they're going to stop this. The other issue that the GLP-1 receptor agonists have been prescribed many times with the expectations of have great weight, weight loss, and when they don't have the weight loss, they, they tend to stop it. But th there's no question, they do work very well, but it, it has a reality of the, of the GI side effects that, they, that has been a problem for, for many Julio, patients. Julio, these side effects are somewhat dose dependent and yes. titration of dependent. Of course. So we can use lower doses and titrate slowly yes. in order to get there. Now with the pens, it's not always easy, but it's possible. Well, the only way to titrate slowly is what I conceive the, the real game changer, because I like to use game changers. I think that the metformin when it came in 1995 was a game changer. Glargine when it came in 2000 was a game changer. I think AGLT2s are a game changers. And now putting the two together, the, the basal insulin with the GLP-1 in the same formulation is a major game changer because you start very slowly, and as you adjust slowly the basal insulin, you're giving the GLP-1 very slowly also. 
And then instead of having a cumulative of 25 or 30 percent of nausea, you have 9 percent. And that becomes highly effective and very tolerable. Did I miss something or did he just agree with you? You know, I think he would agree with me if he, uh, <laughs> well, if he used the meds the way I use uh, them. But that's what I was saying earlier, that these drugs are becoming additive in terms of efficacy, and they're l limiting the side effect profile. I mean, less weight gain or, in fact, weight loss in combination, greater A1C reductions, and the added value of, of um, uh, the other benefits that go along with these agents. Um, together, I think, make them an ideal combination. And efficacy is, at this stage, when they're used, they're very, uh, you can design them to not only lower, as we said, the, the preprandial or the fasting, but the postprandial as well. Now, you were talking about titrating up. Without having up. to give insulin. You were talking about titrating up, and, and we've been talking about fixed dose combinations. What's the rationale for the fixed dose combination then? One injection. Okay. You have to, so you're giving two drugs that slow, are injectable with one injection, titration. and slow titration is another. But really, the key for the patient is one injection. Yeah. Let's be careful with the lexical. Let's be careful with the with the with the semantics. You said fixed dose. Right. Fixed dose refers to a combination of metformin and a DPP-4 in one pill, or an SGLT-2 and metformin in one pill. Here you have a fixed dose. Here with this, the basal insulin and GLP-1, you have a fixed ratio that is titratable. Okay. So That's then you can adjust because people say, oh, I'm going I'm to give you something fixed dose. No, no, you need to adjust the thing. No, it's fixed ratio between the ratio of the insulin and the ratio of the GLP-1. And as you adjust, you adjust both at the same time and it's titratable. I get it. That, that actually does make more physiologic sense, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not just, here's your dose. See you next year. That, no. It's, <laughs> the ratio is where we're at. So the FDA has been looking at all of this, right? I, I think it's going to be much safer, too. How so? You know, you can, well, you can easily, I mean, they, the, the algorithms are generally to, for, to go up two to four units, depending upon of these fixed ratios. But in fact, you can do one unit per day. Simple, uh, which we do in the grade. We go one unit per day. And it's slow, but steady and safe. And uh, I mean, I think it's the way to go. Is not to be in a terrible rush. Um, this is more to get it done. You know, that fast titration is something that I found over time is so much more effective because you know people kind of get they get excited at the beginning and they're really working hard. And if you take too long to get to goal, there's two things that happen. They think, oh, insulin doesn't work because my sugars aren't looking better. Or they get tired of titrating and then quit testing and quit titrating. So I like that one unit every day. I think it really has improved oh, the, it, it the works patients extremely getting well to goal. Um, the Canadians say actually did this study yeah, and, and yeah. it showed that, that one little, little unit a day, if the blood sugar is above 100, you go there and it's totally non-threatening. Totally non-threatening. Totally non-threatening.